Hello everyone, today I Shivam and my friend Viswa Mohan Singh is going to explain our project on CRISPR G9 editing of E. coli. CRISPR has the potential to revolutionize gene editing. CRISPR is a novel tool in gene editing that allows the modification of genetic DNA at specific target sites in many different organisms. In this project, we will use CRISPR to mutate a DNA sequence ourselves. We will not cure a genetic disease quite yet, but we will modify the genetic DNA of the bacteria. And now, the objective of the project is to investigate the relevance of a DNA template when using CRISPR to edit the genomic DNA of E. coli, I mean Ischero Gia coli to make it streptomycin resistance. And this is mainly the CRISPR Cas9 system, how we are going to proceed with it. So let's clear it with a video. The CRISPR Cas9 system is a tool for cutting DNA at a specifically targeted location. The technique has already revolutionized gene editing, but scientists are always looking for new... Since being discovered in a bacterial immune system, CRISPR-Cas9 has been adapted into a powerful tool for genomic research. There are two components to the system, a DNA cutting protein called Cas9, and an RNA molecule known as the guide RNA. Bound together, they form a complex that can identify and cut specific sections of DNA. First, Cas9 has to locate and bind to a common sequence in the genome called a PAM. Once the PAM is bound, the guide RNA unwinds part of the double helix. The RNA strand is designed to match and bind a particular sequence in the DNA. Once it's found the correct sequence, Cas9 can cut the DNA. Its two nuclease domains each make a nick, leading to a double-strand break. Although the cell will try to repair this break, the fixing process is error-prone and often inadvertently introduces mutations that disable the gene. This makes CRISPR a great tool for knocking out specific genes. But making double-strand breaks isn't all CRISPR can do. Some researchers are deactivating one or both of Cas9's cutting domains and fusing new enzymes onto the protein. Cas9 can then be used to transport those enzymes to a specific DNA sequence. In one example, Cas9 is fused to an enzyme, a deaminase, which mutates specific DNA bases, eventually replacing cytidine with thymidine. This kind of precise gene editing means you could turn a disease-causing mutation into a healthy version of the gene, or introduce a stop codon at a specific place. But it's not all about gene editing. Several labs have been working on ways to use CRISPR to promote gene transcription. They do this by deactivating Cas9 completely so it can no longer cut DNA. Instead, transcriptional activators are added to the Cas9 by either fusing them directly or via a string of peptides. Alternatively, the activators can be recruited to the guide RNA instead. These activators recruit the cell's transcription machinery, bringing RNA polymerase and other factors to the target and increasing transcription of that gene. The same principle applies to gene silencing. A crab domain fused to the Cas9 inactivates transcription by recruiting more factors that physically block the gene. A more outside-the-box idea for using CRISPR is to attach fluorescent proteins to the complex so you can see where particular DNA sequences are found in the cell. This could be useful for things like visualising the 3D architecture of the genome or to paint an entire chromosome and follow its position in the nucleus. CRISPR has already changed the face of research, but these new ideas show that what's been achieved so far could just be the tip of the iceberg when it comes to CRISPR's potential. 
Whatever comes next, it seems the CRISPR revolution is far from over. In the project, we will do a CRISPR gene editing experiment. Specifically, we will use CRISPR to modify the genetic DNA of E. coli so that it becomes streptomycin resistance. Streptomycin is an antibiotic that binds the ribosomes and prevents it from making proteins, stopping the bacteria from replicating and growing. Our goal is to make a specific mutation in the ribosomal subunit protein so that it prevents streptomycin from binding it, allowing the bacteria to grow on streptomycin medium. Our DNA modification needs to change a single DNA base so that the lysine amino acid is turned to the threonine. For this purpose, the kit includes two CRISPR plasmids and a specific DNA repair templates that carries the desired DNA change. We will test if we can also achieve the desired mutation when doing the CRISPR reaction without the DNA repair template. For the procedure, we need some items, but mainly to be specified is Odin kit and plasmids. Now we start with the procedure. When we receive the kit, make sure to store all the perishables in the refrigerator or freezer as advised in the kit manual. We will prepare enough bacteria transformation mix tubes to do 4 CRISPR experiments. When we come to transformation and CRISPR steps, you will test the CRISPR reaction with and without the DNA template. We will do each reaction in duplicate to make sure our results are reproducible. We will prepare the CRISPR reaction according to the table given. Once we have prepared your CRISPR reactions, make sure to label your plates so we re <coughs> remember which cells we spread on which plate. When we are done, we will make sure to inactivate our mod modified bacteria with 5 to 10 percent bleach before disposal. This is the pictorial representation of the procedure. Now we will analyze and interpret our results. When we look at your plates, do you see little white colonies growing? Do colonies grow on every plate or any on some? We know only in some. If we did not see any colonies on the plates without the DNA template, does that mean the CRISPR reaction did not work? But we can say that presence of a DNA repair template makes in a CRISPR reaction does the Cas9 protein still cut the DNA at its target site? We will absolutely say no. The template DNA used in this study was the gene encoding the rhizomal S12 protein which is the target gene for the antibiotic streptomycin. This template DNA has a single base change from an adine to a ketosine. This change causes the DNA to code the lysine instead of theroin in this protein. This change prevents streptomycin from binding to and disabling the protein which allows the bacteria cell to grow on media containing the drug. We can say we get the desired DNA mutation that makes E. coli streptomycin resistance with a DNA repair template. To summarize, we have successfully established the CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing tool in a laboratory by editing the genome of E. coli. This will enable us to undertake further studies in understanding the molecular basis of antibiotic resistance and virus-less of pathogenic microorganism and also functional analysis of mammalian genomes. And also we have made the E. coli bacteria streptomycin resistance. And in this study, we achieved the goal of development of a very fast and easy genome editing technique with high efficiency based on CRISPR-Cas9 system that only required the work of one plasmid construction and one transformation which allow mo the modification of a within three days and could be performed with multiple bacteria. That's all about our project. Hope you like and enjoyed it. Thank you.